Hi, this is Nora Gon. Yarn Market is featuring seven pieces from Nora Gon Volume 9, and I'm going to go through each one, show you some alternate views, and give you some information you might not know so you can decide what you want to make. Zazana is knit in the really light and airy wool Peruvia Quick. This sweater is seamless except for some tiny seams that happen in the bottom band and the cuff. The lace and cable pattern that goes down the center of Zazana is really very easy. You have to think about like every 10 or 12 rows you have to think about making that cable. Otherwise it's really easy to see and memorize. You'll see that it's not down the back, that only the yoke pattern is across the back. And here's a great view of the sleeve where you see how I picked up across the top of the uh, four stitch cuff, increased greatly, and then that formed a really nice bowl at the bottom of the sleeve, which is then decreased a little more gradually up to the underarm where it fits really normally at that point. The blackstone tweed that's used for the Tavis scarf, it looks like a rustic yarn, but it's really soft and wonderful. It's got mohair and angora and a nice quality of wool in it. And it's um, an unexpected thing when you look at it, you think rustic and then you touch it and it's really soft. The cable on this is one that I worked really hard on. I made up the cable and I've made it reversible. So don't expect it to look the same on either side, but it looks good on either side. You need to know that this cable is on a chart and that we have some hints on the Barocco website about reading charts. If you look under the multimedia tab and then go to the how-to videos, you'll find something on reading charts. The scarf itself is really just a big rectangle so you don't have to worry about decreasing into the cable or anything. Oh you might want to know that the cables happen on both the wrong and the right sides which throws some people but once you know about it you should be fine. And we try very very hard at Barocco to get our patterns correct the first time really I have to tell you how hard we work but things do slip through occasionally and we have pattern corrections on our site. You look under the pattern tab or under the quick links tab and you can find corrections. There's a cor small correction to the key of Tavis. The Brina cardigan is knit in one of my favorite yarns, Ultra Alpaca, which is half wool and half alpaca. This one is also seamless. I tried to go with a lot of seamless things in volume 9 because I know more and more people are asking for them. On this one, you start out with the band that's, that goes all the way around the bottom of the yoke and then you knit down for the sleeves and the body and you knit up for the yoke part. The little bobbles that you see here are not true bobbles, but they're what I call I-cord bobbles where you never have to turn it over. So it's like a little knotted thing that, that you work back and forth, you slip it onto the other needle. But for me this is much, much easier than the turning around part. And then also you should know that this sweater does not have to open at the bottom. I chose to put the ribbing just on the yoke portion because it's a, a fashion thing that, that I like and some people can wear it. And some people prefer a band that goes all the way down the front. You just leave out the crochet that's on the bottom portion and put a band all the way down. The Ian hat is a nice quick knit. Again, it's got those bobbles that um, that I like so much that you just slip back and forth and never turn around, except these are bigger. It's got a nice big braided cable. And the big feature, how can you miss it, is the pom-pom, which when I was doing this, I actually ran out of yarn and ended up using a little bit of the blue, but I really like it. So you'll see there's a little bit of a blue in the huge pom-pom there. We used the four and a half inch uh, clover pom-pom maker for that. I used Ultra Alpaca for the Gullvig tunic as well. You can see from the picture that this tunic is very long and it's very full at the bottom. If your um, skills are up to it, not too hard, to make it shorter and then less full at the same time by starting a few rows up on the chart. So start after the first or second decrease and reduce the number of stitches accordingly. This has a sleeve that's sort of a modified raglan. You'll see it comes to the point, but there's still a shoulder. That's a, a trick I learned years ago that I quite like that sleeve. And the V-neck 
has a nice little crocheted trim on it. It's interesting to see what the back neck looks like because this is a trick I use a lot where the fronts um, have an extension that meets at the back neck and then that sews down. It makes a really nice neckline. I use it over and over again but sometimes it's hard to know what to sew to what and, and here's a great illustration that you, since you get to see the back neck. Again this has those little bobbles. These are really tiny knots that you go back and forth. You don't have to turn anything around. The NYX cowl is the lace and cable scarf really. It's five feet long and you sew the two ends together to make this infinity cowl. We use the Blackstone Tweed Metallic for the one in the picture and um, it gives it a little extra sparkle but obviously the Blackstone Tweed or the Blackstone Tweed Metallic, either one is really good. This is a nice, um, not quite brainless, but just keeps you, you going kind of project. Good for TV knitting, I'd say. Peruvia, which is 100% Peruvian wool, is used for the Aeneas cardigan. This cardigan has an interesting construction. I put the schematic on this slide so that you can see the back and the sleeves are fairly normal. They're kind of a modified raglan, a raglan with a, a big top, not doesn't come to a point. And then the fronts are merely triangles. This has a cable that's um, on a chart, so you need to know how to read charts or go to our website for help on that. And also this is one that you need to look for a pattern correction. There's another uh, key to the chart correction on our site. I have had people tell me that something that was very important is that you should do the back or the, um, the big collar piece first to kind of learn the pattern and know what's going on before you start the fronts because on the fronts you're decreasing on each side and doing the cable and for some people that's a little more to keep track of. Maybe not for some people, for most people that's a little more to keep track of. It's better to learn it when you're going straight and then it's easy to do the decreases later. I have another tip for the collar. I would say knit the collar but don't bind off until you're sewing it on. I think for the front it's probably a row to a row to sew on and then you want to gather, not gather, but ease the back neck in a bit and make it a little bit more narrow and then come down the other front. You really don't want this band to be too long. It's better that it's a little too short than too long. It'll look better. So then if you haven't cast off, you, you can wait until it's sewn on and you know where it's going to end before you bind off. So that's it for my highlights from Volume 9. Happy knitting!